In the last three episodes, I have discussed the king and the royal English oak tree, Gog and Magog, and the royal cipher of the king at the base of the root of the tree, where John the Baptist gave the warning that the axe is already laid to the root of the tree. Any tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. And that royal cipher, the mark of the king, is at the base of the tree on the coronation screen, the royal English oak tree. And all of the nations of the Commonwealth are printed on the leaves of the tree. I've been discussing how the Lord had revealed that to me about the fig tree and all the trees revealing from Judges 9 that the people were setting themselves a king on the throne at the time of all the trees saying these things it's a sign of a coronation of a king when you see the fig tree and all the trees and then you know that summer is near the king is coronated on May 6th then you know that summer is near and when all these things come to pass the kingdom of God you're supposed to know is near but we have another king and this is part four. Another king, Nebuchadnezzar, in Babylon. He's a king. And he had this dream about the tree. And this is part of what I was going to say. Um, so let me just read Daniel 2. One night during the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had such disturbing dreams that he couldn't sleep. He called in his magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers, and he demanded that they tell him what he had dreamed. As they stood before the king, he said, I have had a dream that deeply troubles me, and I must know what it means. Then the astrologers answered the king in Aramaic, Long live the king! Tell us the dream, and we will tell you what it means. But the king said to the astrologers, I'm serious about this. If you don't tell me what my dream was and what it means, you will be torn limb from limb, and your houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. But if you tell me what I dreamed and what the dream means, I will give you many wonderful gifts and honors. Just tell me the dream and what it means. They said again, Please, your majesty, tell us the dream, and we will tell you what it means. The king replied, I know what you're doing. You're stalling for time, because you know I'm serious when I say, If you don't tell me the dream, you're doomed. So you have conspired to tell me lies, hoping I will change my mind? But tell me the dream, and then I'll know that you can tell me what it means. The astrologers replied to the king, no one on earth could tell the king his dream. And no king, however great and powerful, has ever asked such a thing of any magician, enchanter, or astrologer. The king's demand is impossible. No one except the gods can tell you your dream, and they do not live here among the people. The king was furious when he heard this, and he ordered that all the wise men of Babylon be executed. And because of the king's decree, men were sent to find and kill Daniel and his friends. When Arioch, the commander of the king's guard, came to kill them, Daniel handled the situation with wisdom and discretion. He asked Arioch, Why has the king issued such a harsh decree? So Arioch told him all that had happened. Daniel went at once to see the king and requested more time to tell the king what the dream meant. And Daniel went home and told his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Those are the Hebrew names of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, which are Babylonian names for them. He asked his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, what had happened. He urged them to ask the God of heaven to show them his mercy by telling them the secret so they would not be executed along with the other wise men of Babylon. That night the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision. 
Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. He said, Praise the name of God forever and ever, for he has all wisdom and power. He controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. He reveals deep and mysterious things and knows what lies hidden in darkness, though he is surrounded by light. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors, for you have given me wisdom and strength. You have told me what we asked of you and revealed to us what the king demanded. So Daniel interprets the dream. Then Daniel went in to see Arioch, whom the king had ordered to execute the wise men of Babylon. Daniel said to him, Don't kill the wise men. Take me to the king, and I will tell him the meaning of his dream. Arioch quickly took Daniel to the king and said, I have found one of the captives from Judah who will tell the king the meaning of his dream. The king said to Daniel, also known as Belteshazzar, Is this true? Can you tell me what my dream was and what it means? And Daniel replied, There are no wise men, enchanters, magicians, or fortune tellers who can reveal the king's secret. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the future. Now I will tell you your dream and the visions you saw as you lay on your bed. While your majesty was sleeping, you dreamed about coming events. He who reveals secrets has shown you what is going to happen. And it is not because I am wiser than anyone else that I know the secret of your dream, but because God wants you to understand what was in your heart. In your vision, your majesty, you saw standing before you a huge, shining statue of a man. It was a frightening sight. The head of the statue was made of fine gold. Its chest and arms were silver, its belly and thighs were bronze, its legs were iron, and its feet were a combination of iron and baked clay. As you watched, a rock was cut from a mountain, but not by human hands. It struck the feet of iron and clay, smashing them to bits. The whole statue was crushed into small pieces of iron, clay, bronze, silver, and gold. Then the wind blew them away without a trace like chaff on a threshing floor. But the rock that knocked the statue down became a great mountain that covered the whole earth. That was the dream. Now we will tell the king what it means. Your majesty, you are the greatest of kings. The God of heaven has given you sovereignty, power, strength, and honor. He has made you the ruler over all the inhabited world and has put even the wild animals and birds under your control. You are the head of gold. So we must remember that if Nebuchadnezzar, who was worshiping idols, had put Nebuchadnezzar in power, then we know that King Charles III is being put in power because God is allowing that to happen to bring about the last of the last days. Okay, so God set up kings on thrones, including Nebuchadnezzar. And it says that in the book of Daniel. So there were things that happened in Babylon that pertain to the trees and the revelation of the coronation of a king being revealed in when you see the fig tree and all the trees um, you're to know that the kingdom of God is near so then it goes on in Daniel 3 talking about the statue of Nebuchadnezzar that he saw in his dream but what happened in Daniel 1 was that during the third year of King Jehoiakim's reign in Judah King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem and besieged it. The Lord gave him victory over King Jehoiakim of Judah and permitted him to take some of the sacred objects from the temple of God. So Nebuchadnezzar took them back to the land of Babylonia and placed them in the treasure house of his God. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, his chief of staff, to bring to the palace some of the young men of Judah's royal family 
and other noble families who had been brought to Babylon as captives. Select only strong, healthy, and good-looking young men, he said. Make sure they are well-versed in every branch of learning, are gifted with knowledge and good judgment, and are suited to serve in the royal palace. Train these young men in the language and literature of Babylon. The king assigned them a daily ration of food and wine from his own kitchens, and they were to be trained for three years. And then they would enter the royal service. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were four of the young men chosen, all from the tribe of Judah. The chief of staff renamed them with these Babylonian names. Daniel was called Belteshazzar, Hananiah was Shadrach, Mishael was called Meshach, and Azariah was called Abednego. But Daniel was determined not to devile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king, and he asked the chief of staff for permission not to eat these unacceptable foods. Now God had given the chief of staff both respect and affection for Daniel. So you see, God was involved in every aspect of this king, even though he was a corrupt king. So. God is involved in every aspect of what's happening with this royal coronation as well. So we have to just go with what God's will is and who he's setting up as kings, even if they are corrupt kings, or even if they're not somebody that, you know, the people like. God is in control of it all. So they had wisdom and they, they were praying to God, the one true God, and they were the royal family and they were praying to him and God gave them an answer to a dream that Nebuchadnezzar had about a tree. And thank you for my commenter who mentioned Nebuchadnezzar's tree and um, I already had videos in the works and so I had not come to this part of the story yet. I wanted to reveal about the meaning of the fig tree and all the trees being symbolic of a king being set upon the throne at a coronation ceremony. And that when we see those things come to pass, God is near, he's nigh at hand, and his kingdom is nigh at hand. So Nebuchadnezzar's dream about a tree. King Nebuchadnezzar sent this message to the people of every race and nation and language throughout the world peace and prosperity to you. I want you all to know about the miraculous signs and wonders the Most High God has performed for me. How great are his signs, how powerful his wonders, his kingdom will last forever, his rule through all generations. So he was worshiping these false gods, but God made it to where he finally acknowledged the one true God as the true king of the universe. So I, Nebuchadnezzar, was living in my palace in comfort and prosperity, but one night I had a dream that frightened me. I saw visions that terrified me as I lay in my bed. So I issued an order calling in all the wise men of Babylon so they could tell me what my dream meant. When all the magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and fortune tellers came in, I told them the dream, but they could not tell me what it meant. At last, Daniel came in before me, and I told him the dream. He was named Belteshazzar after my God, and the spirit of the holy gods is in him. I said to him, Belteshazzar, chief of the magicians, I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in you, and that no mystery is too great for you to solve. Now tell me what my dream means. While I was lying in my bed, this is what I dreamed. I saw a large tree in the middle of the earth. Could it be that this was a large royal English oak tree? And I say that because of this next sentence. The tree grew very tall and strong, reaching high into the heavens for all the world to see. And the royal English oak tree is known for its strength and being strong. It had fresh green leaves and it was loaded with fruit for all to eat. Wild animals lived in its shade. So that royal English oak tree 
is good for shade. And birds nested in its branches, as we see on the royal coronation screen of the anointing ceremony. Wild animals lived in its shade and birds nested in its branches. All the world was fed from this tree. Then as I then, as I lay there dreaming, I saw a messenger, a holy one, coming down from heaven. The messenger shouted, Chop down the tree and cut off its branches. Strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beasts get out from under it in its shade and the birds from its branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump and roots in the earth. Bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field, let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let him graze with the beasts on the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from that of a man. Let him be given the heart of a beast. And a beast is a king. And let seven times pass over him. This decision is by the decree of the messenger and the sentence by the word of the holy ones in order that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, gives it to whomever he will, and sets over it the lowest of men. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now you, Belteshazzar, declare its interpretation, since all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation, but you are able, for the spirit of the holy God is in you. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for a time, and his thoughts troubled him. So the king spoke and said, Belteshazzar, do not let the dream or its interpretation trouble you. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, may the dream concern those who hate you, and its interpretation concern your enemies. The tree that you saw, which grew and became strong, whose height reached to the heavens, and which could be seen by all the earth, whose leaves were lovely, and its fruit abundant, in which was food for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and in whose branches the birds of the heavens had their home, it is you, O king, who have grown and become strong, for your greatness has grown and reaches to the heavens, and your dominion to the end of the earth. So we've got this strong royal English oak tree on the holy anointing screen of King Charles III. And his royal cipher at the base of the trunk of that tree. And inasmuch as the king saw a messenger, a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven and saying, Chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave its stump and roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field, let it be wet with the dew of the heaven, and let him graze with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my lord the king. They shall drive you from men, your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make you eat grass like oxen. They shall wet you with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over you till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. And inasmuch as they gave the command to leave the stump and the roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be assured to you after you come to know that heaven rules. Therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of the twelve months he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. The king spoke, saying, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you.
And they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. And that very hour the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and ate grass like oxen. His body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair had grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws. And at the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me, and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth no one can restrain his hand or say to him what have you done at the same time my reason returned to me and for the glory of my kingdom my honor and splendor returned to me my counselors and nobles resorted to me i was restored to my kingdom and excellent majesty was added to me now i nebuchadnezzar praise and extol and honor the king of heaven all of whose works are truth and his ways justice and those who walk in pride he is able to put down so in this dream you have the royals of the kingdom of Judah telling this corrupt king Nebuchadnezzar that he is this strong tree that will be cut down leaving only the stump and the roots so when I said that John the Baptist gave a warning 2,000 years ago Behold, the axe is already laid to the root of the tree. Any tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and cast into the fire. And I saw King Charles III's royal cipher, which is the mark of the beast, the mark of the king. I'm thinking this seven-year time of Nebuchadnezzar till he acknowledged God applies to the seven-year time of Jacob's trouble where this king is the generation from the time of his birth until he sat on that throne and reigns for the last seven years all of these things um, the trees are declaring the fig tree and all the trees are declaring that they are setting a king upon the coronation throne and Jerusalem is where all of this is going to come to a head where all the things of mystery Babylon the Great are going to be right there in Jerusalem with this king sitting upon the throne with the Sanhedrin as reigning as the world supreme court with the one world religion with all the faiths and religions coming together with King Charles III's coronation oath which he's already bringing these people into his procession following the cross that the king put his leopard head mark on with a hammer a hallmark in the silver of the cross bearing the two slivers from the true cross of Christ which very well may be royal oak of the king's tree because they found a sliver of oak in the linen of the shroud of Turin on the back where his shoulders rubbed repeatedly on that cross of that wood so Jesus is going to put an end to these kingdoms and rule and reign forever seven years until the king comes to the end of his reign and Jesus rules when you see these things come to pass behold the fig tree and all the trees are declaring they are setting up this king and when you see it come to pass know that he is near even at the door and this generation is the one of the king who must sit upon that throne at the end of the Queen's 70 year reign and reign for the last seven year until Jesus the true King of Kings and Lord of Lords establishes his Davidic throne forever and ever amen Jesus 
He is the rock quarried out of holy Mount Moriah. He came out of the cave of his death, burial, and resurrection as the rock quarried out of God's mountain. And he comes down from heaven at the end of the seven years time of Jacob's trouble with this king sitting upon the throne of David, the restored Davidic throne from the tribe of Judah that Daniel was a part of that royal lineage and he's giving this dream interpretation and Jesus comes down as that rock and smashes all the kingdoms of this world that have ruled and reigned that are tainted with the corruption of ancient Babylon now Israel Jerusalem itself is the scarlet harlot And of course, I'm borrowing my mother's copy of my book, and she read through it in 2016. By the grace of God, she got to hold it in her hands. This is available from olivepresspublisher.com. And believe me, it's worth every penny because it came from the Holy Spirit and it took a lot of work and effort to put it down in the way that God had wanted me to do this. I pray you're blessed by it and also it was acquired at the Harvard University Library by the Leon I and Louise S. Gubin Judaica Endowment revealing the Messiah of Israel to Israel for the last days and it's completely exciting and thrilling. God bless you. I'll talk to you in the next video. Shalom for now.